Give us a sense of how you're seeing the housing market. Yes, yeah, so I think it's clear whether you're looking at home sales activity or building activity, we are definitely taking a big step back from the frenzy that we saw during most of the pandemic. Mortgage rates play a big role in this about face for the housing market. Mortgage rates have surged dramatically since January. They're up still about two, two and a half percent above where they were. Um, and this data that we're getting right now comes from July when those home sales would have gone under contract in June, when mortgage rates were surging, they moved up 70 basis points just in three weeks in June. So we're really seeing the heart of the impact of higher mortgage rates on buyer decisions, and it's made it harder for them to buy homes in the U.S. as a result of those higher rates. Is it affecting prices for houses as well as just the number of sales being made? So the answer is yes and no. Uh, we are seeing home price growth slow, but home price growth was still up by double digits. Homes were about 10% more expensive in July than they were at this time last year. So we're not seeing a huge slowdown, but we are seeing a bit of a slowdown in home price growth. In, in the meantime, rental prices, at least some places, are way up. There's a piece on the Bloomberg actually just today calling an apartment frenzy and recounting some of the difficulties people are having. What's going on with rental prices? And so with it getting more challenging to get into the housing market because of those high costs, and because of those high rates, home shoppers are looking for alternatives. Many of them are choosing to rent for longer. And as a result, we're seeing really high demand in the rental market. Now, the construction data that was out this week showed some really interesting trends. We are seeing a pullback in single-family housing starts. We saw a bit of a pullback in multifamily housing starts this month. But compared to one year ago, single-family housing starts are way down, and multifamily housing starts, which would typically be rentals, are up by a lot. So what builders are doing is pivoting their attention more to the rental market. It's not going to spell immediate relief, but it does mean that renters have some relief on the horizon. Where are we with inventories? And I guess I mean by that, how many houses are up for sale? Uh, so there's an inventory there, but also with the vacancy rates are on rentals on the other side. Yeah, vacancy rates are at, rent at record lows for homeowners, and they're quite low, uh, very close to historic lows for the rental side of things. So that's created this sense of frenzy. On the homeowner side, even though vacancy rates remain quite low, we're starting to see more homes sit for longer on the market. As buyers kind of grapple with these higher costs, it takes them longer uh, to decide to make an offer and to get the deal done. So uh, we have inventories up about 30%. Even though the number of new homeowners in the last couple of weeks has, has declined, um, the number of new homeowners decided to sell has declined. So we've got fewer new homes coming up for sale, uh, but at the same time, the homes are sitting longer. And so we're seeing the total number available for shoppers increase. Rental side, uh, you know, not quite as low vacancy as we see on the homeowner side, uh, but still close to record lows. It could really benefit from that increase in construction that we're starting to see as builders pivot to multifamily construction. Is there any end in sight? I mean, the Fed at this point is saying they're going to continue to raise rates. We don't know how far, how long, but they se seem to indicate they're doing that. At the same time, we've seen some indications that the rental prices keep going up. Yeah, rental prices keep going up. Our data does show that they're not going up as fast as they were. So, uh, you know, as we're at these record highs, as we're getting to the point where uh, households are grappling with rising costs across the board and trying to navigate those rising costs, landlords may have a little bit less room to be able to push the envelope. Fortunately, they've already been able to uh, pass along a lot of cost increases to help cover their costs, but now we're going to see some more balance in the rental market, which will uh, you know, be augmented by the fact that we get this uh, construction on, on the way uh, that will help bring back more vacancy and, and help put renters on more even footing with landlords. Daniel, you started this talking about mortgage rates and how they're really affecting the housing market. At the same time, we haven't seen the full reduction of the balance sheet from the Fed on mortgage-backed securities. Is that just going to get worse? You know, it is likely that we will see mortgage rates continue to climb, but we've seen them come down. They were very close to 6% by a lot of metrics in June. They're now down just above 5%. They're kind of waffling in this range between five, five and a half percent lately, searching for direction. There's a lot of uncertainty about when and how fast the Fed is going to continue its tightening policy and when it's going to end. We think that the pressure for mortgage rates is on the high side because of that balance reduction that you uh, mentioned on the Fed's balance sheet. Um, so for home shoppers in the market today, I would take advantage of these lower rates, mm. relatively lower rates. Um, mm. While you have them, we expect them to continue higher. But the biggest advice I like to give home shoppers is to rate proof their budgets. And that is figure out what happens to your monthly costs if mortgage rates go up a bit or go down a bit. So you're prepared no matter what mortgage rates decide to do. Because I think the one thing we're likely to see is more volatility till the end of the year. 